Welcome to episode four of Playing with Research in Health and Physical Education. Uh, today I talked to Kevin Mercier, who is an associate professor at Adelphi University in Garden City, New York. Uh, Kevin graduated from Teachers College at Columbia University uh, in curriculum and teaching and physical education where he got his doctorate. And he's a former New York State Teacher of the Year for secondary schools. Uh, he's done a lot of extensive research working with PEP grants in and around the New York City area. Does a lot of research in uh, attitudes, uh, student attitudes in physical education. Um, he's also a really nice guy. And uh, so hope you enjoy this uh, episode. And uh, without further ado, here is uh, Kevin Mercier. Hi, we're here with Dr. Kevin Mercier from Adelphi University in New York. Uh, we'll be discussing his 2017 article titled Three-Year Study of Students' Attitudes Toward Physical Education, Grades 4 to 8. And this was published in Research Quarterly for Exercise and Sport. And uh, thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us to talk about your article. Thank you. Uh, so can you give me a bit of a background of the research preceding this article? Um, maybe give us an overview of what we know about the relationship between attitude toward physical education and future physical activity. Sure. Uh, my colleagues and I have done a good amount of research on attitudes in physical education, both looking at students' attitudes and teachers' attitudes. Uh, we know that there you know, is a relationship that students' attitudes are likely to influence participants in future physical activity. You know, one of the overarching goals of physical education is to have physically literate individuals uh, who do want to and actually engage in physical activity throughout their life. So since this relationship between uh, future physical activity and student attitudes has been identified, it's important to kind of further understand how this could influence. Uh, we know that, you know, Ennis has reported that positive attitudes are more likely to help people develop, uh, you know, are more likely to influence future participation in physical activity. And Silverman's identified uh, that basically a negative attitude could people not being physically active in the future. Okay, so what do we know about student attitude toward physical education and how it changes? So, yeah, some uh, people have done some interesting work in trying to identify student attitudes uh, and at different grade levels with different uh, with both genders. And, uh, you know, the first part in this is developing uh, scores from instruments that are shown to be valid and reliable for measuring a construct, in this case, attitudes. Uh, so uh, Silbermanium and Silverman developed an instrument uh, that was which scores were shown to be valid and reliable for measuring attitudes toward uh, physical education for students grades six through eight. Uh, following up on that, Phillips and Silverman uh, developed uh, an instrument to measure the attitudes of students in grades four through five. So once we had valid and appropriate instrumentation, uh, people were able to conduct studies to identify what are the attitudes of students in different grade levels. We found out that fourth and fifth grade students uh, really had overall positive attitudes toward physical education. And this has been reported by Phillips and her colleagues in a couple of different papers, both quantitative and qualitative uh, articles. 
Subramanium and Silverman identified that attitudes decrease as students progress from sixth to eighth grade. Uh, and there's been other studies, um, some qualitative in nature, some quantitative in nature, that have, pr that have, for the most part, confirmed high attitudes among upper elementary school students toward physical education, decreasing attitudes uh, among middle school students toward physical education. Okay, so what led you to doing this study and what were you trying to find out? So what we wanted to do and really to help build the, the breadth and the knowledge of attitudes in physical education was to kind of confirm what some of these initial findings have taught us. In order for us to be able to speak to results with confidence, we want to make sure that studies can be replicated. Uh, so we wanted to see, could we do this? But we wanted to implement a much stronger study design. Uh, both uh, uh, Subramanium and Phillips' work uh, dealt with one-time data sampling of a student in a population at one moment in time. Uh, we wanted to follow students and groups of students over years. So the current study followed three cohorts of students over three years. It would allow us to speak with more confidence to the results and to generalize the results because we could really talk about what had happened over time with individual students, in this case a large group, uh, up to 240 students that we were able to follow. The second purpose was to really identify where a change uh, in decreasing attitudes took place. The initial work looked at fourth and fifth graders or sixth through eighth graders. Uh, that time period of fifth to sixth grade had not been investigated previously. In the United States, in public schools, that transition from fifth to sixth grade is typically when students enter middle school from elementary school. We were guessing that that's where the decrease would start with all the changes that happened in middle school, but there were not any data to support this. So the purpose was to be able to use a stronger study design to, to really be able to confirm the preceding study's results. The second was to figure out, does this decrease that was identified from sixth through eighth grade actually start uh, as students move from fifth to sixth grade? Okay, so basically you did a three-year longitudinal study. You followed these students, uh, 240 students over that time period. Um, can you explain how you followed them? What were kind of the data methods that you had? Uh, sure. So we were in uh, several school districts over a period of time. And if you look at some of the other publications that my colleagues and I have had, you'll notice that some multiple school districts. Uh, this specific study, we were really immersed in one school district over a period of time. Uh, so there were other data being collected uh, on fitness testing, on activity levels, there were interviews going on. Uh, so we were able, really able to have uh, a lot of interactions with what was going on in this specific district. So students, as they progressed through the grade levels, uh, we had different interactions with them. So we were able to administer an attitude survey to these students for each of three years. So the cohorts, there were three cohorts, either started in fourth grade, fifth or sixth grade, and we followed each group of students as they progressed from fourth to sixth, fifth to seventh, or sixth through eighth grade. We actually had a lot more students in the sample, but only students who completed three years of attitude survey uh, surveys were included in the final uh, analysis. Okay, so now you had the validation study published and you have basically a cohort data, a longitudinal data for three of these cohorts over three years. Um, what were the, some of the major findings there? Well, a lot can be learned uh, simply by looking at our initial analysis, which looked at means and standard deviations uh, for grade and gender. But you can see that fourth and fifth grade students had the highest means. The attitude surveys, uh, both of them, the fourth and fifth grade and the sixth or eighth grade survey, students responded 
on five point Likert scales with one indicating the lowest score or negative attitudes and five indicating the highest score or the most positive attitudes. So the fourth and fifth grade means are all higher than 4.5 out of five. You can see that fourth and fifth graders had high attitudes, which is very similar to what Phillips and her colleagues found in their initial study. You can also see if you simply look at the means that these uh, overall average scores decreased where the one eighth grade group had a mean of 3.32. So in essence, scores went from above 4.5 to below 3.5 as students aged from fourth through eighth grade. Now, more in-depth analysis occurred to let us know that these scores were significantly different from each other. But just looking at the simple overall mean lets us know, yeah, uh, these scores decreased in a similar pattern to what previous research had indicated. The figures also identified by a cohort how those uh, scores decreased. So, and then those... Uh different cohorts, were they by grade level or gender? Did uh, student attitude change based on what grade they were or gender? So in first looking at the grades, yes, we saw a significant decrease starting in fifth grade by grade. So scores significantly decreased, meaning attitudes became less positive starting in fifth grade and continuing from fifth to sixth, from sixth to seventh, and from seventh to eighth. So that was really the major finding from our grade level analysis. From the gender analysis, uh, yeah, we saw some really interesting uh, takes. One thing is that initially, with our upper elementary school students, girls uh, displayed more positives than boys. We saw this specifically on the cognitive curriculum component. And what this means basically is that girls found the uh, the curriculum or, or the material, the units that were being covered, to be more important or useful than boys did at the elementary school level. Over time, we saw this decrease. Girls' attitudes as they aged decreased at a sharper rate than boys' attitudes did. So whereas girls' attitudes started off higher than boys, they ended up significantly lower than boys as a result of their experiences in physical education and beyond. So that's really interesting. So going into typically in the United States, middle school, girls start their or girls start their decline in that attitude. And so even Correct. though boys are also dropping girls are dropping way faster. Yes, statistically significantly faster uh, than boys' attitudes, which are also dropping by grade level. So it's okay. not a, a, a decrease that we saw solely in girls' attitudes. So this project confirms some findings from other studies that uh, looked at when student attitude begins to decline and where they were at their peak. Um, can you explain a little bit about what this all means? Yeah, I think it means that uh, we've definitely identified and we can speak with confidence that attitudes decrease starting as students transition to middle school. We know that there's a lot going on as students move to middle school. Uh, you know, people become more aware of their interactions with peers. They may not be interested in activities that cause them to sweat. They don't want to be embarrassed or look bad in front of the people they're engaging with. Um, and we know that all these things relate to attitudes. Uh, for attitudes to be positive uh, you know, or negative, we know that there's a cognitive and an affective component. On the cognition side, uh, students need to see things as being useful or important. And on the affective side, it needs to be fun and enjoyable. So if the activities that we select and the experience students have are not viewed as being important or useful, cognition, or fun or enjoyable, affect, the students are going to have or continue to develop negative attitudes, and they won't want to engage in activity. Uh, we know, and, and the, we know from previous research, as well as from the school that we were in here, you know, middle school physical education is 
oftentimes filled with team sports and a focus on competition. Uh, not all students like that. In addition, not all students have the skills to be successful in team sports. And so if there's a focus on gameplay and competition, uh, students may not see things as being important or useful. And those students who are low skilled definitely won't find them fun or enjoyable. I think that the activities that are selected and implemented by teachers at the middle school level definitely impact the enjoyment level or the perceived usefulness and thus lead to decreased positive attitudes. So that, that's really interesting. So there is a distinct difference between what you saw in attitudes in elementary versus middle. And that gap could be because your instrument looks at affect and cognition and looks at the curriculum and the teacher. So you're seeing that it could be something to do with the curriculum and not finding it meaningful. Exactly. So we, the instrument has questions that are associated with teacher and curriculum, uh, both on the affect and the cognition side. So there are four subscales of the instruments, affect teacher, affect curriculum, uh, cognition curriculum, cognition teacher. We saw significant decreases in all four categories, but then when we look specifically at gender, and getting back to earlier on in our conversation when I said that girls had higher attitudes or more positive attitudes than boys, specifically on the cognitive curriculum, meaning they saw it as being useful and important as compared to boys, uh, at the girls were significantly different in boys and on the um, affect curriculum component meaning that they did not, girls identified that they did not enjoy the curriculum or find it fun. And so I find, think that that's also interesting that now in middle school, we're seeing decreases. Both genders are identifying that they don't find um, the curriculum or the teacher to be contributing to positive attitudes, but more so for girls. So when we look at why did girls' attitudes drop further or faster than boys' attitudes, uh, the, the sub factor would say that it was because they did not enjoy or find the curriculum to be. So should we be focusing on fun in physical education to try to counteract this decline in attitudes? Well, I think we have to figure out and, and I know that, um, you know, I believe it was Garn and Cothran wrote about the fun factor in physical education. I think that things need to be enjoyable for students to become engaged. The, the sole purpose is not to make things fun, uh, but I think that it was Graham who had said, you know, a goal should be fun that's achievement oriented. You know, I think that if the students see things as being important and useful and they enjoy it, they're more likely to be in the activity and they're more likely to develop more positive attitudes. You know, we think about exercising or going to the gym. I think that most people from a cognitive standpoint would say that it is important and useful to go to the gym. So they may have a positive cognitive attitude, but a lot of people don't like going to the gym. So that negative affective attitude counteracts the positive cognitive attitude. And a lot of people don't go to the gym because they don't like going to the gym. Part of our challenge, I think, as physical educators is working with our students so that they understand it's important and useful to be active, but then helping them find what they enjoy doing to be active. It seems as though the research is telling us that a lot of kids don't like a team sport focused competitive environment in physical education. Some students do, but it seems like a lot of students and Students also identify being bored and the repetition of activities and the lack of learning as other reasons that they don't necessarily enjoy or find physical education useful. Yeah, I, I think you bring up some really fascinating topics, and this is a really robust study for a three-year longitudinal study with the same students. Um, and I think it's interesting. There's a lot of 
content that you bring up about the differences in middle school and elementary physical education and maybe really revisiting how the traditional model doesn't work and or it doesn't work for very specific students and maybe we add some choice in there so i'd be interested to hear a lot of what our listeners think about this um and honestly really appreciate your time um for uh those of you who want to read the full article uh you can find it in research quarterly for exercise and sport published in 2017 so that's all we have for you on this one uh thanks for listening